Okay, hello, I'm Paul, I'm the games developer, and in this video we're just going to take a quick look at Stackmaster's gameplay to see if it's something that you'll maybe be interested in. So here we are, we're at the main menu, and before we start, let's answer the question, what is Stackmaster's? Well, some might argue that it's a puzzle game. But I think that's kind of missing the point. It was never intended to be a puzzle game. It was always intended to explore gameplay physics as the central core mechanic of the game. And so I think a much better way of describing what Stackmasters is, is to call it a competitive physics sandbox. So how does that actually play out in practice? What does a, a, a competitive physics sandbox look like? So here we are, we'll go back to the main menu here and we'll go into the level select. And we see the categories and different levels in the game. We're going to start on the warming up category here, which is nice and easy levels. This is, I think, level four in the game. And we'll, we'll have a quick look here and see what this is like. So as I said, this is an early level in the game, fairly simple. And I see that it's loaded my autosave from the last time I played it. So we're just going to go into gameplay, and turn that feature off and reload the level and we'll see how the level would look to somebody who's just starting the game. So around the edge of the arena we have these blocks um, and these are the, the pieces that the player can play with on this particular level. But if we put them in the middle they become physics enabled and everything's active and this is where the physics sandbox part of the description comes in. But how do we make that competitive? Well first this is our um, goal zone where the, our aim of this level is to stack a block so it's sitting inside this goal zone so let's try and do that we can see the leaderboards here when I, I, I point at the uh, the goal zone but we'll have a look at that in a second so I've got to find a way to to, to stack these blocks up in in a way that allows me to get them to the goal zone and I can see well that's not gonna that's not going to do it can I somehow Put that there, there we go, that works. But as you can imagine, how many different ways are there to solve this level? We can see it's doing the countdown now. We'll let that finish its, its thing. Okay, and that's given me a score. And we can see that my best height is 6686. And where does that place me on the leaderboard? It, I'm not even on the leaderboards with that score. It's not good enough. You know, the, the lowest score on the, even on my friend's leaderboard is 7,253. And if you're wondering how high is that, this little number down here shows me the height of the mouse. So if I went to 7,253, I can see that, or sit, what's the, oh, no, no, hang on, hang on. No, I was on the leaderboard. I'm on the global leaderboard, but it was a score I did before on a different playthrough. But let's imagine I wanted to try and um, I'm competitive, I want to improve this. So we'll we can we can move things around. And this is why I don't consider it to be exactly a puzzle game, because there's just an infinite amount of solutions and everybody's solution to every level tends to be completely different to everyone else's. You know, we could move this over here, maybe put this one on here and that's actually a better solution. Oh no, it's not quite a better solution, but you can see how, or maybe I could ram that, jam it into the top. You know, if I moved all of this over here. Oh, can I get this jammed in here? Oh, I can, but it falls over. But you get the idea. So it becomes a competitive little sandbox, and this is, this is a very early level in the game. So is it all just about stacking little towers like that? But no, far from it. We'll, we'll sh I'll show you in a little bit um, some, some of the more extreme stuff that you'll, you'll find later in the game. But I just want to, I don't want to show too much of the late game, so let's have another look at different variations we have earlier in the game. Um, center of Mass, let's have a look at this level. And this brings in a new mechanic. And while I'm talking about mechanics, I should explain that each category in the game um, unlocks different mechanics or a different style of gameplay is explored in each category and within each category we have easy levels here at the start the first couple ones like this is even called easy start and then the later le levels in each category are harder so rather than levels constantly getting harder and harder and harder as you go through the game each category has a selection of easy and hard levels so even the younger players maybe you want to take the, play the game with your kids even the younger players will have a few, a few levels in each category they can beat and progress through the game and get that sense of progression. But let's get back to where we were and I just wanted to show you the different types of blocks we can have in the game. So here, if you notice, these blocks have a little dot in the middle of them and these are pivot blocks. 
So wherever you grab the block, doesn't matter where you grab it, it's going to pivot around that central position. Whereas if I grab one of these blocks, you'll notice that it doesn't. This one I rotate manually by holding both mouse buttons down. And we'll also notice the time has stopped. So maybe we'll have a look at that now too. So the difference here is if I move with the left mouse button, it's all active. And if I put this block with the left mouse button, everything stays active. But as soon as I grab with the right button, everything stops. And I've now lifted this block up. You'll notice the shadow on this block is a little bit higher than the one below it. And so this allows you to lift blocks out of the arena. And the reason time stops is that maybe you were making a stack, you've got some things stacked up here. And then accidentally you grab this block and you, go, and, you, you move, and you go, oh, I didn't want to do that. So as long as it's in an invalid place, where, like, trying to drop it here is invalid, that's why it's gone like a transparent colour, it'll just snap back into position. But you can also use this mechanic to set things up, like I could set this block here and then maybe quickly grab this one with the right button so time's paused and then set them up like this you see so the amount of possibilities of how to create stacks is almost infinite so it's a very much a little physics sandbox and then obviously we've had the competitive nature of it so what else do we have what other kind of things do we do in the next level drop zones let's have a look in here and we'll have a look at this drop them in and so this is a drop zone in the middle and in that zone, if I put a, a block in the middle here, I can move it around as normal. But you'll notice if I try and drag it across the drop zone, the drop zone will move and it's, it automatically dropped the block. That's why they're called drop zones. So I didn't let go of the mouse. As soon as I move a dynamic block over the drop zone, it will drop it. So my goal here is still to reach this, but how can I do that if I can't place a block in there? You know, if I try and place a block, it just it gets thrown away. You know, with the, whatever momentum I have. So I could drop from above. You know, maybe we could try balancing that on there. Or maybe I could try grabbing it in this very bottom corner so that the hand doesn't go inside the goal zone because it's all about that hand. As soon as that hand, uh, uh, the mouse icon, touches it. Oh, so there we go. And then maybe then I can drop this one on top of there and then here we go this is working out nicely and then maybe we can drop that one on top of there and we're in we're into the goal zone here and it didn't trigger because oh it will trigger on this one because this was my previous record this line here and we've just beaten it so it's triggered a new a new score okay so what else do we have let's move quickly to something a bit later in the game because i could spend too long here let's show something what can we have a look at maybe intermediate blocks this might be a nice because these are this is a very different style of gameplay to what we've shown now this is maybe level 60 in the game and as you can see this is a very different thing like here's my block choices at the top and it's i mean could i even stack them that high no, not really they're not the right shape blocks to stack so the mechanics here have changed and now we're starting to think ah what's this and how can i use it well this is part of the arena it's just like it's immovable but oh hang on that, that was something going on there if i did that and put another oh can i see I, i'm i'm utilizing the time pause here to grab this one with the right mouse button so time stops to put it in there and then maybe i can wedge this in here oh hang on let's just move it a bit more and maybe move that one that way and that one that way and you'll see in a second what i'm going for here and it's to stop this from rotating away we've put we've kind of uh jammed it into the ceiling so let's move these blocks back up here and so my goal is still to reach this, but obviously I can't stack up towards it. I've somehow got to to make somehow got to get over to there. Like maybe if I put that. I mean, obviously I'm more experienced, so I know roughly what's plausible. Oh, okay. You see, and then maybe this one here. Ah. Uh, Okay, so you get the idea. There's a lot more variety to the game and possibilities than we showed. But I think we've, we've kind of covered the basics of what to expect in the game as far as gameplay is concerned. So let's have a look at a few of the other features of the game, like uh, maybe the, the level editor. 
So the game comes with its own fully featured level editor and here when I click this I get the option to make a completely new level or edit the current one. So I'll just click current. We'll, we'll notice now I'm still back in the level I was previously in but now I'm in edit mode. So what does that mean? Well it means that now I have this right click menu giving me options to actually alter this level. So I can show the block library which is all the blocks available in the game and I can now drag new blocks into this level you know and start to develop and create a new level and there's different block shapes here and different mechanics and things so as you can imagine with these you know if I could be making this level I just need the right block here maybe this block and you'll notice that the game is still fully active it's a com you, you can play the game in the editor to play test your game as you're going along and let's say we want to add a new a new zone in here let's add a new zone so you can have more than one goal zone per level um, and you can have there's, there's ways like I can do turn it into a multi zone where we've got two goal zones and you have to trigger both goal zones at the same time in order to complete the level like neither one of them will trigger unless both are triggered so you'd have to find a way to not only stack over here but also stack into this one at the same time and then when you're finished with your level and you imagine this is my level I've finished it and I've I've placed all the blocks around the edge again nice and neatly so it looks good we can go in here and we can save it and we can save to the Steam Workshop. It's as simple as just going upload to the Steam Workshop, giving it a description, giving it a name, clicking save and then we'd find it over here. Let's have a look. And here we are in the Steam Workshop, you know, um, on Stack Masters. And you can just browse here. Uh, with maybe we go in this level and we go, oh, this level looks good. I can subscribe to it. And that, that's what we'll do. So I've subscribed to Stretch Left. And then if we go back into the game, and then let's go over into custom levels. It's another part of the main menu. While I think about it, just uh, if ever you see me doing coming in here, I'm just pressing the escape key. It's just like in any game to get to the main menu. Um, if we come into custom levels, and then here we see the levels that I've made um, in the past. You see, oh, I originally made this stretch left level and it saved it in here for me. But I just subscribed to it in the workshop. So to find that version of the level, I'd come in here into the Steam workshop and we can see that it's not here yet. And that's just because I'm playing the game when I subscribe to it. So I need to click the refresh button and there it is. Now we've got stretch left that I downloaded from the workshop that somebody else could have made, of course. Um, and then just click on it and then I can play this level so you can share your own levels you can make your own levels, share it with friends um, and just before I finish off on here if you're making levels you can even get your levels into the game uh, community selection here here's the first one and all these levels were made by some of the alpha testers and they're already in the game but I'm looking to expand this and allow Lots more. So here's community selection too. These are a bit more difficult using some of the more advanced mechanics, but we've got room for plenty more. And we can have each one of these categories could have a hundred levels in them. I mean, we can scroll all the way left and right in there. And then we've got the final community selection where I'm waiting for players to get really good at the game. And I've called it You Guys Are Evil, where we'll put some of the really difficult levels in here. But I, I should wrap this, this, this video up. I think we've covered mostly everything. Um, so what's the future? The future of Stackmasters, I've kind of already described that I want to let the players do some more things, but the entire game was a bit of an experiment for me. It was I wanted to explore this, the, what we could do with these physics, um, but I also wanted to make a game relatively quickly. Um, the, the Steam like indie marketplace now is incredibly highly saturated. So spending three or four years on a game is incredibly risky. This is what I did with my previous two games. And this one, I wanted to make something quicker and then work with the community, you know, release the game, which is it's coming out next week, and then work with the community to evolve the game into something much bigger and much richer. And that's why the game is uh, one of the reasons why the game is so cheap is though, although it's nicely polished already and we've got uh, well over 100 levels, it's kind of just step one in a multi-step process to really find out and, and really explore what's possible with this with this gameplay mechanic or new gameplay mechanics built around it. So I'll wrap it up there and uh, hopefully the video has inspired you to find out a little bit more. And if it has, I'll see you on the leaderboards.